What do coders and software engineers actually do during their day? Well, let me show you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Polly, and on today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys what a day in my life is as a programmer, coder, computer scientist. I feel like a lot of the videos out there don't really show what you do. I don't think showing you my breakfast or lunch is really important as to what I do in a day. I actually wanna show you guys the process of coding and how the day goes by and what you get, what you don't get, how it works, and I wanna give you a better look into that. So make sure to like and subscribe and let's get into it. Okay, so before we actually get started, I kinda wanna explain what I do. I'm a web developer right now. I'm working on as a front end web dev. And so that's kind of the work that I will be showing you today. But it's important to keep in mind that uh, whether you're working in back end, whether you're working in front end, whether you're working on databases, anything really, it's kind of a common practice what we do. The actual like moving back and forth and coding, it's kind of all the same. But I just wanted to give you guys a really specific as to what I do. I am also 100% remote, Ooh. and so this is my office, half bedroom, and so I got my two screens, my keyboard, my mouse track pad, and let me show you how we actually work. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I do when I normally sit down at my desk is check my emails and check my Slack message. Slack is basically like a messenger for um, companies, mostly coding companies use it. So it kind of gets rid of emails and you're able to talk back and forth with your teammates on like group chats or direct messages. And I like to check these just because it kind of um, tells me like what I have to do today. Um, it reminds me as to where my other teammates are, what they're working on, what they're expected of the day. So as of today, I'm currently, I have something to work on. And before I tell you what I'm gonna work on, I want to explain what are the two different paths that you can kind of take when you're coding. So there's kind of two things that the way it works. So one, you can either be working on a bug ticket. So a bug ticket is kind of a, well first off, let's explain what a ticket is. A ticket is kind of um, like your homework of what you have to do and your project manager has told you or somebody has assigned it to you and it tells you what you have to do so it has the requirements where they found the issue or what is needed uh, it can have many things like designs it can have specifics it can have uh, what the actual logic is so it's it tells you what the logic is now you can have a, different types of tickets most commonly one of them is either a bug ticket which is a fix or to a feature which can be broken down into many tickets so a bug ticket is normally between a day and a day and a half or less than a day they're pretty quick and so they're quick fixes that you need to go into the code base and find whatever the ticket said that bug ticket and go in and fix it then the other type is a feature so a feature is an actual large implementation into the code base so you're gonna have to build something from scratch or build onto something and those can take a little bit more than a day and three days so that's kind of like a a larger process versus a bug ticket is kind of like you go in you figure it out you find it and you're done and a feature is kind of like you go building little by little until you have it all done and so today I have a bug ticket. So I'm gonna take you guys on my journey of doing a bug ticket. Okay, so I'm gonna get my environment set up, get my project running so I can get the code base and see the actual thing running so I can get started. So let's do that. So we've got our environment running. I obviously am not going to show you up close, super up close in the code and the actual thing due to privacy, but I, this isn't focused on what I'm actually encoding. It's kind of like the overall process and what it actually looks like to code. So, but I do want you to guys to notice I do, this is what it looks like. This is what I kind of stare at all day. Um, I have my code and then I kind of have what I'm looking at to see the results of what I'm making and what I'm writing. Um, so right now I'm going to go ahead and look at that ticket, read the requirements on that ticket, 
to make sure I am doing the right thing before I go ahead and start coding. So let's watch me do that. It's a pretty quick one. And so what I do want you to notice, which is kind of an overall practice that happens if it's a ticket or if it's, I mean, if it's a bug ticket or if it's a feature, it's kind of the same thing on repeat. So what you're going to see me do is you're going to see me look at my code. You're going to see me write some stuff. You're going to see me a few seconds later, refresh. You're going to see this refresh and you're going to see me look at this, then go back and forth. Until I see until I see that I have what I need or what is required. I've located where in the code I need to implement the fix or the change. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement it. So I found it and I'm gonna go fix it. I'm currently adding something in and there's kind of different ways to do it. What I like to do, what I've learned is I kind of do a wide search, which I explained in my other video. Um, I do a wide search for what I'm trying to add in, like so similar, to see how the rest of the code, how it's done in the code base, how my teammates have done it, how uh, the standard is in this code base. Um, typically, if it's a standard and it's up to date and it's still being used, the way that to do it, then I'll add it in that way. But if I see that the way that it's been added is kind of outdated, then I'll go ahead and add in the new way of doing things that you kind of know throughout while being in the community of coding, you know how things are done. So that's what I'm doing right now is checking throughout the code to see how they do it to kind of follow the steps. And if it's outdated, do my own. So let me check. Okay, so my original uh, idea to how to fix it isn't working. So normally what I do now is I kind of take a step back and I think about it further versus kind of the first thing that came to mind. And this is a common thing that I find that I do a lot is I try out what I think it is and then it doesn't work. And so I take a step back and I think about um, how it plays into the bigger picture and then find the um, solution through there. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of trouble because it's not doing what I want it to do, but this is kind of very normal, not kind of, this is normal when you're developing, you kind of have to see how your solution works, if it, is, if it did it, if it did work, how it worked, and kind of like manipulate it to get it to work. So right now I'm working with code that's already been there, so I have to fix it. So this is um, the importance of understanding why your code works because when you understand how it works, you can add a, um, a better solution. So I have to go dig deeper and to see how it's working. I ain't getting anywhere. So I'm gonna go do that. Okay, so I'm almost there. Um, I'm sure you saw me at one point Google something. Um, and I think that's super important to mention is that we do not memorize everything. We, t I mean, at least I tend to forget a lot of things. So it's not like I uh, remember all the solutions or remember all the rules or the gram or like the actual syntax. So I find myself Googling a lot to make sure that I have the correct syntax and following the correct rules because I don't need to memorize that because it's not gonna help me. It's just gonna take up space. So. It's okay to Google. We Google often, um, you know? So, we're almost there. It was worth the trouble. We did it, yay! I finished. So, um, that was a process that was pretty accurate of how uh, most of my days go and most of my ticket goes from how tiny they are to how big they are even if it's a feature to a lot of like um checking see if that worked sometimes it doesn't work so I have to dig deeper um in this case i had to go um 
deeper into my own solution i had to go see what was influencing what code was influencing the code that i was putting on top of what was already there because it wasn't working so i had to go back look at it from a further position okay so now that i'm finished i'm gonna go ahead and make a pull request or a merge request which is basically a fancy word for saying i'm gonna submit it so I'm going to submit it to my teammates so that they can see it, they can revise it, they can make any suggestions, con comments, concerns. And once they give me the green light, I can go ahead and I can push that into the actual code base. So I kind of made like a side draft and I'm, it's like I, I put my solution in a draft. I'm going to submit it to my teammates for review and once they review it, I can actually put it into the actual code base. Um, that's a little bit of a... A process on git if you don't know how that what that is but you will or what watch me make that merge request before i make that merge request i always like to double check my work uh i want to make sure that everything is clean there's nothing no testing code left behind or a mistake that i made it's kind of go ahead and polish and like feather dust it so i'm gonna do that before i make that merge request so here's a cool thing if you can see you have like the blue and the red or sometimes it'll be green and red it depends on the colors but it's a really cool feature where it shows you what was there before and what you wrote now so it's easier to compare it's a before and after so it makes it really easy for cleaning and checking the code that you wrote for your merge request so that's a fun tip I left something behind that shouldn't have been there, so good thing, see? I'm taking that out. The importance of double checking, it's real. So I've gone ahead and I created that merge request. I sent it over to my teammate so they can go ahead and check it out. Um, I also have my protein bottle here. I have not drank yet because I've been too busy working. But, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and send that over. I, it is about one o'clock now. I have a meeting at two. So I'm gonna go ahead, break for lunch, and then I'll come back to that meeting. Here's the scoops on meetings and being a, web, a developer, coder, whatever you wanna call it. So with meetings, we generally do not have a lot of meetings. Um, some companies have a meeting every single day for the developers. It's a kind of a 15 minute meeting called a stand up. You may have heard that already in other research that you've done, but that's kind of like to touch base to let your teammate know what you're working on, what, uh, what you worked on yesterday, what you worked on today, and if you're blocked by anything. But in this case, we're talking about real large meetings that are more than 30 minutes to an hour. Today I happen to have one and it's a meeting that happens about every two weeks where the team, the developers, the designers, uh, the project managers get together and they kind of talk about the future work. So work within the next two weeks, so what we're gonna be working on in the near future. This way we are all on the same page. We can raise any questions or concerns. Um, we know what's coming. So we all have a good know what's coming for us um, and these are generally called sprint planning so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a, a look into that obviously I'm not gonna show you all the details but that way you can see like how what like what I do you know I'm not really talking I'm not really hosting I'm just kind of listening and looking out so you guys can get a backstage pass turns out five minutes before my meeting it was canceled so it's not normal that it gets canceled but they, people couldn't make it so that's postponed tomorrow so i will not be showing you a meeting but at least i kind of gave you the gist of what a meeting does so i think i have about two hours left in the day about a little bit more than that um so i've just been told that they need a a hot fix which is basically like a fix that needs to happen asap a small fix that needs to go out into production and so i need to go uh burn that fire water that fire i don't know Put out that fire i need to go put out that fire so you guys can watch me finish this hot fix with my end of the day you can watch me again do my little back and forth let's get to it but what is gonna save the day with my hot fix mm -hmm.
So I created that hot fix change and got it out. So it's almost the end of the day and I actually do have some comments from one of my teammates on that merge request we made earlier this morning before lunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and address those comments, add that fix that they suggested and I can call it a day. That's it. So I made those changes. I let my teammate know I got that hot fix out. It was quite a busy day, lots of lots of back and forth, lots of doing stuff, but it was super productive and it was pretty accurate as to what most of my days look like. Oh, I also want to say that it's not always gonna be easy. Like you saw, I struggled. I struggled today in some parts of my solutions and I had to go back to the drawing board. That is super normal. That will probably never go away please correct me if i'm wrong but you're always gonna have to struggle a little bit but that's the fun part once you actually get to your solution it's, it makes it all worth it if you have anything that works for you or any tips or any ideas i know the way that i work is not the only way there are different ways out there so don't be afraid to comment share let's have a conversation about what your days look like if it's different from mine or what you have or any questions that you have just let me know Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay. Focus. Okay. <laughs>